Hi guys, welcome back to Bite Size Excel. In today's video, we're going to take another look at pivot tables. Some of the topics we're going to look at in today's video are about creating a pivot table, some common issues or errors that you might get while you're creating them. We're also going to look at some tips for formatting and displaying data within your pivot table. And then finally, we're going to touch on pivot cache, including what it is, and what you need to understand about it. I'm going to include a link so that you can download the workbook that I'm using in this video. You'll find it in the description below. I'm also going to include timestamps so that you can easily find in this video any particular topics that you might be interested in. So without further ado, let's get started. Now we're going to start today's video with a quick reminder about how we go about inserting pivot tables. If you want more of an introduction to pivot tables, I do have another video which I'm going to link to in the description, as well as a video which covers some of the common issues. But as a quick reminder, what we can do is we can click anywhere in our table, come to this insert tab and click on pivot table. And if you're anywhere within your table, it should select the correct data. You can do a quick scroll down to check. Alternatively, you can select your data before you click on pivot table. And then you pick either whether you wanted a new worksheet or an existing worksheet and click OK. And as you can see, our pivot table has gone into a new worksheet. Now, one common issue you might get when you're inserting a pivot table, as will happen in this example here, is if I select this data, go to insert pivot table and I want to add it in this workbook, click OK. I get this, the pivot table field name is not valid. And this is an error you get when you're missing a heading. Now, what can happen is you may have a hidden row or you may just have a missing heading. But what you can do is quickly unhide all rows and then make sure that each one has a column header in it. So in this instance, we want to add date in here. And now if we select this data, and click pivot table, add it in the existing workbook, you'll see that your pivot table has added in. You might also run into some issues with your pivot table when you're adding some new rows at the bottom of an existing table. So in this example, we've got the table from a moment ago, we've summed it by date, and what we want to do is we want to add in some additional rows at the bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this, drag this down just to make it quick. However, when we hit refresh on our pivot table, you'll notice that the grand total stays the same. And this is because the pivot table isn't picking up that you've added new rows at the bottom. So there's two ways you can resolve this. The first is to come over to this pivot table tab and go to change data source. And then what you need to do is make sure that you're looking at the full pivot table. So this goes to row 68. So you can either select your data or just change it in here. Click OK. And then you'll see it's refreshed automatically and the total has updated. However, probably a better way of doing this, if we just undo that a little bit, is to click into your table, go to insert and insert a table. So essentially you're converting this table into an Excel table. And then when you add some additional rows at the bottom, again, I'm just going to drag it down for speed. And we hit refresh here. It automatically updates because this pivot table is pointing at the table. And as long as all your data is recognized in that table, it will automatically update. Now, moving on to some tips for formatting and displaying your data in pivot tables. In this example, we've got a pivot table that we created earlier from example data one. And we've got the regions within the UK down as rows and your columns are the years. And then we have a grand total column. And what you might notice is typically in a pivot table, when you change any of the data you've got displayed. So say I wanted to change it from population to area all your column widths change back to fit the data that's contained in the, within. However, you might not want this. So if we undo that, the very quick way to do that is if you go to pivot table options, so right click in your data, pivot table options, 
And then on this Layout and Format tab, see this Auto Fit column weights on Update. We just uncheck that, click OK. And then if you change your data, the column width stay to whatever you've set them as. The next formatting tip we're going to look at is about how to maintain your number formatting within Excel. Now, if you've updated the formatting for numbers and you find that every time you refresh what data you are looking at and it's constantly changing back to what it was before, one of the ways you can make sure that the number formatting is maintained is to click on a number within your pivot table, right click, go to value field settings, and down the bottom corner here, you will see number format. Click on number, format it however you want it to be formatted, click OK. And when you hit OK, your entire table should update. So we're next going to look at the headings within our pivot table and how we can change these so that they are a little bit more sensible. So first of all, we've got this sum of population at the top, which is probably a little bit of a strange header. Now we can change this in a couple of ways. One of them is to click into our table, go to our value field settings, and you'll see here at the top, we've got our custom name, a sum of population, and our mid-year estimate, which is our title from our source data. Now you can just update this in here. So say we just wanted to say population. Click OK, and that will update. Or alternatively, potentially a slightly quicker way of doing it, is to just come to in your cell and change it in here. You can do the same thing for any of your column headers. So if we want to take out the total, you can just do that quite easily. Another way to get slightly different headings within your table is to come over to your design tab over here. And you'll see you've got a range of options in terms of whether you want to show subtotals or grand totals. But if you come over to report layout, your pivot table automatically go in in this compact form. If you changed it to show an outline form, it then changes some of your titles so that they're a little bit more sensible and more in line with your source data. And that can be a quick and easy way to just update your headings. We're now gonna have a very quick look at different ways you might want to display your total data within a pivot table. So in this example, we've got our year again, and we've got our total population as a sum. However, we might want either a count of the data or the average. And what you can do here is you can go into your values down here, select the little drop down and come to value field settings, or equally you can right click on here and come to value field settings. And in this box here, we've got things like sum, count, average, and you can show values as different calculations. So you can either have as a percentage of the grand total or the column total, row total, and so on and so forth. So say instead of having a total figure there, we want it as a percentage of the total. You can click here and click OK. And you can see that now we have a percentage rather than the number. If you want both pieces of data to display, what you can do is you can drag another version of this population in here. And we've got it as percentage and you can shuffle it around and obviously adjust your number format and your headings as you see fit. One last display tip we're going to look at is how you can go about when you've got blank data within your original data set. So this, we've created that pivot table from this data set, which has a number of blank rows for years where we don't have data, which just means that we have some blank cells within our pivot table. And we want that to show zeros or some other value. It's quite quick and easy to do. We right click, we go to pivot table options. And in this box where it says for empty cells show, you can put in a value. So if we add a zero here and make sure that's checked, click OK, you'll now see that a value comes in for those. And if you were to select all the values in your table and change the number format, say to accountancy, you'll see that that change respects the formatting type that you have. One last topic we're going to touch on this video is around a pivot cache. Now this is something that gets automatically generated whenever you create a pivot table. And what it is, it's a replica of your source data. So when your pivot table is looking up any of these fields and summarizing your data for you, it's actually not looking at the source data, 
it's looking into the pivot cache. And this allows your pivot table to function optimally and quite quickly. And essentially what you're doing whenever you're refreshing your pivot table is you're refreshing the cache from the source data. Now, one downside of a pivot cache is that it does increase the size of your workbook. However, what you can do with this, so this data table here, this pivot table, is linked to example data one. Because it's got a pivot cache, I can actually delete this worksheet. And what I will then get when I go back to my pivot table is I will find that I actually can still look up and change any particular elements. So say I want to take population off and say put grand total on, you'll see that the pivot table still functions. And that's because it's looking up the pivot cache that's stored behind that you can't see. Now I've obviously deleted my original data table and you might think you don't want that. But one tip you might not realize is if you were to double click anywhere within this table, you will get a sheet showing the data that it contains. So say I double click on grand total. I essentially now have all my source data back. It's in a slightly different format, but it's all in there. And something else you can do is say, I just want the data for East Midlands. I can double click on that and I'll just get the rows and the data that's relating to that particular total that I clicked. So this is really handy if you say want to have a pivot table in a separate workbook just by itself, but then people can still double click on certain elements and get the data that sits underneath it. It can also help keep the size of your workbook down. Now one point to note is that if you're creating multiple pivot tables from the same data source, they can share a cache, which means that if you're grouping particular fields and make changes within your workbook, that will apply across all your pivot tables. You can force your pivot table to use a different cache by instead of copying it or creating it from the same data source, you can cut and paste. So say we copy this over to here and then cut it and paste it in. This will now have a different pivot cache than the original data. Again, this would increase the size of your workbook. If you'd like a little bit more information on this, do let me know in a comment. So I hope you found this overview of pivot tables useful. I'd love to hear your thoughts on what you'd like to see in future videos. As always, please do hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, and I do hope to see you on the next video.